High Adventure. Tonight, Ron Evans tells us his story of suspense called In Cold Blood. that gun under your overcoat yourself. This is my third operation. I know what to do. Somebody could open that carriage door at any moment. How about you explain that machine pistol you're waving around? Does it matter now? Only three minutes to go, Martin. Yeah, two and a half. Yoshi and Bellman will already be in position at the other end of the restaurant car. I think all the children will be inside there by now. The woman I saw with him. Who is she? An English teacher, Myra Castez. She arranged this tour into West Wales for them. Ah, it was helpful of her. This time, there'll be no mistakes. The British will be helpless, and are not likely to do here in Wales what the Australians did. It is foolproof, Yusuf. All right. Ninety seconds left. Get ready. The corridor is empty. Move on. After you. Yoshi and Bellman will be waiting for us to make the first move. Ah. You see through the glass? Yes, yes. They are all eating. Get ready to pull the communication cord and brace yourself for the sudden breaking when you do it. Ready. Now! Right. In we go! And fire one bullet over their heads! Everybody stay where they are! Audacious piece of terrorism, but it worked. Four men, two German, one Japanese, and a Palestinian, managed to hold up a train a few miles east of Harlech. It was done with expertise and with the ruthlessness of the professional. And these men were professionals. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Bruce of MI6, and within three hours of the message being given me, I was at the scene. The train hijackers had released a large number of the passengers, one of whom was briefed on what to tell us. The chief constable, Colonel Banks, was there, and he quickly explained the situation. They've chosen their ground well, Colonel Bruce. Open ground for 200 yards on either side of the line. We can't get closer than that without drawing their fire. As you can see, the front and rear of the train have been released and taken away. All that's left is that one carriage. Hmm. Restaurant car, isn't it? Yes. All the children were having lunch when it happened. Thirty-five of them and a teacher. All the other passengers have been set free. The message I got said they were school children. That's right. Uh, touring Britain on some reciprocal exchange scheme, you know the thing. Yes. Somewhere in the States, the same number of British kids are being taken on tours. Anyway, all that's beside the point. The men who are holding the train, have they made any demands yet? Same thing as before. 60 political prisoners being held in Britain, France, Denmark, and Israel to be released no later than Friday midnight. Then they're going to start shooting the kids one by one. The swines will do it, too. There's little mercy in this game. Hmm. A little less than 32 hours. And by the look of it, this is going to be a hard nut to crack. We don't risk a frontal assault except as a last resort. And that way we could save most of the kids... But I'd rather save them all. Have they made any arrangements for communicating directly with us? I've sent to Barmouth for a receiver. They've given us this wavelength to listen into. Hmm, I see. Right. As soon as you set it up, I'll have a chat to them. Meanwhile, all we can do is to watch and wait. I see you've effectively sealed off the area. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, I can hear you. What do you want? Who are you? In the first place, I'd like to know why you've done this incredibly brutal and stupid thing. I ask for you to identify yourself. Lieutenant Colonel Bruce of MI6. 
Very well, Colonel Bruce. Let me warn you of this here and now. If you want to call us names, do it with your friends up there. All I have to do is flick a switch to cut you off. Do you understand me? If you must know, we have chosen children as our target in the knowledge of how sentimental the public is. Thirty-five child hostages are worth a thousand adults. What organization do you represent? Black September. But by your accent, you're a German. Yeah, I am German. We are international guerrillas assisting the Black September. Only one of us is a member of the organization. Yeah. I take it you're one of the Bader Meinhof gang. Yeah, that's right. I am Martin Strang. I tell you this so that you will realize there can be no compromise. The prisoners are released, or I, my three companions, and the children will die. Martin Strang. Yes, I've heard of you. Good. Then I think we understand each other. You have until midnight tomorrow to save these children. Martin Strang, a man wanted in most law-abiding countries of the world, the Eastern Bloc countries included. He was a hardcore terrorist who could never be talked into surrender. The choice left to me was to mount some kind of attack to rescue the children or give in to his demands, and to take the latter course would need the cooperation of the Israeli, French, and Danish governments, which was highly unlikely. Meanwhile, in a small room in England, a group of 15 men sat around a large table. One of them, who went under the code name of Achilles, was speaking. I think you'll agree with me, gentlemen, that the time for action has come. Yes, indeed, yes, action at all costs. Yes, we've yes. talked for many months, and I don't think there's a man among us who would care to back out now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Good. Through my contacts at the Home Office... I've learnt the names of the four men involved. Their leader is Martin Strang. The Jap is Yoshi Samaroto. The Arab is Jakob Hassan. And the second German is Franz Bowman. I'm sending a message immediately to our people in Germany, Japan and Iraq to do their duty. As soon as I've received positive replies, I shall contact Lieutenant Colonel Bruce, who's in charge of the train. I think that our action will have the desired effect. Oh, yes. To this day, the identities of the men who attended that gathering are unknown. Nor is it known who were their overseas contacts. But it became obvious later that they were a secret military organization. Men who were highly skilled and had formed this association, which called itself Backlash. They even had the tacit help of people in authority, as I was shortly to discover. The next morning, I was with Colonel Banks inside a communications truck which had been sent up overnight from London. I don't suppose it'll do much good asking for more time. Oh, no good at all. The French and Israeli governments have already rejected their demands, so there's little hope now of a negotiated settlement. So you're going to mount an attack? Fifty special assault troops have arrived from London. Oh, yes, and ten snipers. The trouble is, all the blinds on the train have been lowered, which leaves nothing for them to snipe at. And we can be sure there's no way of luring these men out of the train. Ah, I agree. As for an assault, I haven't a clue how it could be tackled. The carriage doors have been connected to high explosive charges. Open one and the whole carriage goes sky high. And if we fire tear gas or smoke bombs through the windows, one of them will fire a detonator and poof! Ah, I'd say that those men are in an impregnable position as long as they hold their hostages. It's a ruddy nightmare. Could we starve them out? By withholding food and water, who do you think will suffer most? The kids. And if they get desperate, they'll blow up the carriage anyway. Besides, I doubt if they'll wait beyond the time limit. Thirteen more hours. Ah, the Ministry of Defense hotline, excuse me. Bruce speaking. Good morning, Colonel. Pardon my using your special line to the Ministry. What I have to tell you is important. Who are you? Achilles? Backlash? I'm sorry, but I can't understand. A am I speaking to the ministry? I am using the ministry line, that is all. Now, please listen carefully to what I have to say. We are going to release those children in the train, but 
We'll need some cooperation from you. Oh, what in heaven's name are you blathering about? Get me out, Colonel. Officially, you can do nothing to save those children. I am fully acquainted with the situation. The explosives on the doors and the suicidal determination of the terrorists I know. I represent a private organization, and we know how to deal with these men. All I'm asking is that you withdraw your troops and police to a 500-yard perimeter around the carriage and do not interfere with us when we land. Land? Three helicopters will land in the open space between your people and the carriage. Leave everything to us. The four terrorists will be handed over to you, alive or dead, whichever the case may be. Oh, but this is ridiculous. I, I can't do a thing like that. Don't you realize I that realize we... realize only that you are powerless to save the lives of those children, Colonel. Give us 30 minutes and I'll guarantee that not a hair on their bonny little heads will be harmed. A blind eye for half an hour, that's all. If you refuse, then we will hold you responsible for the children's deaths. Well, I... I, I don't know what to say. If I knew who you are, I, I might be you able... You'll never know who I am, nor who my colleagues are. We are an anti-terrorist organization which is prepared to meet fire with fire, violence with violence. In addition, we can do many things which the government would never allow. Now, are you prepared to let us save the situation? Or are you going to leave it until it's too late and let those fanatics destroy the children? You must tell me now. How did you manage to get through to this number and get the use of this special line? Fancy material, Colonel. We have others who are ready to turn a blind eye to our activities. Men ready to put an end to this wave of international terrorism. Can I put you in that category? No. Half an hour, you say? Not more. That I can promise you. And what will you do in those 30 minutes? I'm not at liberty to explain that. All I can say is that our choppers will arrive at 1,300 hours precisely. It's, this puts me in a, in a very awkward position. More awkward than that of the children, Colonel? Well, no, but... Uh, oh, very well. I'll withdraw my men to a 500-yard perimeter at uh, 1,245 hours. There was something about the man's voice that instilled confidence. It was against all my instincts of duty to do as he asked, but I did. Objections were raised, but I brushed them aside without an explanation. How this so-called Achilles was going to deal with the inflexible Martin Strong and his pals had me guessing. I thought I'd considered every possible method. I had, except for one. With precise military timing, the shapes of three helicopters arrived over the scene. Two of them were small. The third was a large one, which the army used for transporting troops. How a private organization came to have one was a mystery, especially one in military colors with only its identification numbers painted out. They landed 200 yards from the train, and eight hooded men in black clothes emerged. For a few moments, I felt as though I were watching something from a far-fetched television series. But it was real enough. The gasps of astonishment that came from the throats of the men about me proved that. More to avoid the questions than to satisfy my curiosity... I stepped forward and walked out to where the hooded men were grouped before the nearest door of the largest helicopter. They ignored my approach at first, and then one detached himself from the group and met me. Pleased yes, to meet you, Colonel. What's all this hooded phantom nonsense? I've stuck out my neck by letting you land here and withdrawing my men. Uh, my chaps over there must think I'm out of my mind. They won't in a few minutes. Open up, Lysander. Come inside, Colonel. We've got all the equipment we need to deal with our friends on the train. I stepped into the troop carrier and stifled a gasp of astonishment at what I saw inside the dim interior. Twenty civilians sat there, firmly bound by leather straps to their seats. Men and women, young and old, each gagged by a strip of adhesive tape across the mouth. I could feel their eyes burning into me as they took in my uniform. Surprise, Colonel. What is all this? Who are these people? These people are close relatives of the hijackers. Mothers, fathers, wives, girlfriends... You see that little group there? We had them flown all the way from Baghdad last night. These here were flown in from Germany this morning. Now, people in Japan haven't had sufficient time. 
So they're holding Yoshi Samarota's people in a cellar in Tokyo. What? Uh, this is preposterous. Is it, Colonel? Just think carefully. All right, perhaps it is preposterous. But is it any more preposterous than what those terrorists are doing to those children? You're going to murder these people if Martin Strong and his gang kill the children? Is that what you're planning? Hector, give me the mic. Get onto Strang's frequency. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me, Strong? Yeah. Is that Colonel Bruce? No. I'm the man who's taken over from him for a while. You can call me Achilles. Your name doesn't matter. What have you landed those choppers so close to us for? I warned Colonel Bruce to keep these people well away. If you don't move out right away, I will have a couple of dead children dropped on the line. Do I make myself clear? Just curb your killing instincts for a minute and listen to what I have to say, Strung. Do you know a Fräulein Helga Schmeiss from Hamburg? What of her? Your father and mother, Herr and Frau Strung, are with me as well as Fräulein Schmeiss. Also your favorite uncle, Herr Gruber and his wife. Did you? Herr? I, I don't understand. Just let me make myself brutally clear, Strung. For every hostage that you shoot, one of these people will be executed from our side. And it will be done outside for you to see, just in case you think I'm bluffing. You are bluffing. You are bluffing. The British government would never allow it. It's against... Against, against all the rules of human behavior? Is that what you're trying to say, Strong? Yes, it is. Like your own behavior. We have nothing to do with the British government. Nor any other government. We're here to fight you on the same brutal and ruthless manner that you've chosen to fight. And remember this, Strong. You chose the method. The lives of your relatives and Fräulein Schmeiss are in your hands as much as those of your hostages. No, I don't believe... Wait, I'm not finished yet. Just in case your partners think this doesn't affect them, tell Jakob Rashid that his mother, father, wife and his two sisters are here. Sitting in the troop carrier are also Franz Bellman's closest relatives, including his two teenage sons. You are lying. You must be. There was no time to ring Yoshi Samarota's people from Tokyo. But my associates are holding his family there. A signal from us will mean their immediate execution. Altogether, Strang, we have 36 hostages. One for one. Nice. To convince you, I am arranging an identity parade outside the chopper. You'll have a chance to see for yourselves. Just give me five minutes. I can't permit this. You've given me a free hand for 30 minutes. Well, there's 25 still left. Lysander, Hercules, arrange for the hostages to be paraded outside. It is true. My father and mother. I can see them. Yeah. Yeah, this Achilles was not telling me lies. Now, what are we going to do? There must be a way out. Do you really think they will shoot our people? I don't know, Jakob. Are you willing to take the risk? First your father, and then your mother. We need time to think. Yeah, time. Time. After the parade of hostages, they were quickly hustled back inside the troop carrier and refastened to their seats. The man called Achilles went to the communications transmitter and flicked a switch. Can you hear me, Strong? Yeah. Now I believe you. Good. Now, I'm giving you exactly 15 minutes to release those children and the teacher. When they are all accounted for, you can come out yourselves with your hands behind your heads. No. No, you, you don't give us enough time. We must talk. 15 minutes, Strong. Then I shoot one hostage for every minute. Starting with your father. You won't do that. How much does Fräulein Schmeiss mean to you, Strong? I'm told you're lovers. All right, so you won't say. I'll use her as a test. Watch through your window for her leaving the troop carrier. When I give the order, one of my men will shoot her. I'm sure that will convince you. You are bluffing the time. Very well, hold on. Hector, put Fräulein Schmeiss outside. You know what to do. Now, wait. I can't permit this. You can't stop us now, Colonel. Lysander, cover the good colonel with your gun. What? If he makes a move to go, shoot him in the leg. No, colonel. Don't look at me like that. I'd gladly exchange your life for the lives of those children. This is atrocious. You can't get away with this kind of thing, no matter whose side you're on. We can, colonel. Just watch through the window. I, I can't hear talking. Was that Colonel Bruce? Hello. Hello. I'm still here, Strung. Never mind who's with me. Fräulein Schmeiss is just being taken out now. You should be able to see her. You, you, you will not shoot Helga in cold blood. 
My blood ran cold as I watched the hooded men lead the German girl out of the helicopter to a position a few yards out in the open. Then the men left her and returned to the doorway. He raised his machine gun and fired a burst. The girl twisted under the impact and fell. Are you watching, Strung? You... You, you nearly killed her. You murdered Helga. <laughs> That's only a start, my dear chap. How, how could you? In cold blood? Yes, we're as ruthless as you are. You're seeing a reflection of yourself. Oh, yes, by the way, you've only got eight minutes left. Your poor father here looks quite worried. He speaks English well and has been listening to our conversation. Would you like to have a last chat with him, perhaps? No. Think twice about that, Strung. Kill the teacher, and I'm afraid your father will have to pay for her life anyway. Fine. As well as the fathers of your pals. You know, tip for tat. Hector, take the fathers out and get them ready. Uh, no, no. Wait, wait. You must give us more time to think. Sorry, old chap. Take a look through the train window. All your fathers are being brought out, and I'm sending a signal right away to Tokyo. Well, in another seven minutes. Just let me talk. I stood silent, dumbfounded. This man, Achilles, meant to carry out his threat of that, I had no doubt. And his men went about their task so efficiently and calmly that it sent shivers up my spine. The one who called himself Lysander still kept me covered. Achilles tapped away the seconds with his fingertips. Outside, three bound men were standing close to where the German girl's body still lay. What will you do if we blow up the train with the children inside? Make no mistake, Strung. When we take off from here, we shall leave behind a large number of dead bodies in retaliation. What good will that do? It might do those poor children no good at all. But it will act as a warning to others who might try the same thing in future. I give you my word, Strung, that if you hurt those children, not one of my hostages will leave this field alive. Wait, wait a moment. You have 75 seconds, Strung. No more. All right, all right. The children and the teacher are coming out. Tell them to walk towards the trucks over there on the left. I want to count them. They are coming out now. As I watched through the window, a rear door in the carriage opened, and the child hostages jumped down and ran across the field towards the waiting line of soldiers. Thirty-five, followed by a young woman, the teacher. When they were clear, Achilles ordered his men to bring in the fathers and then turned back to the transmitter. Are you there, Strung? Hello? Hello? Well, I'll be damned. They've blown themselves up. Good riddance, too. They knew they were doomed anyway. Lysander, go and bring in Eve, will you? Eve? Who's Eve? A girl that you thought was Fräulein Helga Schmeiss. She's really one of us. An excellent actress, don't you think? That blonde wig, she looks for all the world like the real Fräulein Schmeiss. Oh, sis, it, it, it's incredible. Yes, it is, isn't it? Now, if you'll kindly go back to your command, Colonel, we'll leave. Oh, and please, do not try and discover who we are. Just remember what we've done. later, the three helicopters took off. As I said earlier, we never discovered the identity of the hooded men, and the whole affair was hushed up. A few inquiries were made, all leading to a dead end. Somewhere up top are men who know the truth. Perhaps we'll never know. For myself, I can sleep more easily in the knowledge that they exist. Adventure is produced by Anne Freed and directed by Henry Duffenthal.